Hello everyone, hope you are loading well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 348. It's a medium level problem and a good one. There is a tricky case. I know that is why the accuracy is on the lower side. You can just see 2000 submissions being accepted out of 14,000. So that's one by six, roughly 16%. Okay, so let's see what the tricky case here is, right? The problem name is sum of matrix after queries, okay? You are given an integer and a zero index 2D array queries where queries of i equals to type i, index i, val i. Okay, we'll see that what it is. Initially, there is a zero index n cross m matrix filled with zeros. For each query, you must apply one of the following changes. If type is equals to zero, set the values in the row with index i to val, overwriting any previous value. Now, this is the thing to observe here. It overwrites any value that is present in that particular row. Similarly, if type of i equals equals 1, set the values in the column with index i to val i overriding any previous values. Okay, return the sum of integers in the matrix after all queries are applied. Okay, let's come to the example. This is my initial matrix n cross n, right? 3 cross 3 matrix. Okay, the first operation I perform is type is equals to 0. That means I need to change a row. Which row? 0th row. What should I put the values in that row? That is 1. So I place 1, 1, 1. Okay. What is the second operation? It's type 1. That means you need to change a column. Which column? Index 2. What are the values? 2. Place 2, 2, 2. Just see this value has been overwritten, right? Then the third operation, change a row. Second row, all the values equals to 3, 3, 3, 3. Just see this value is also overwritten, okay? Fourth operation, change a column. That's the 0th column and all the values will be 4, 4, 4, 4. This value also overwritten, right? And this value also overwritten. Finally, this is the configuration, okay? I need to find the sum of these values, right? So if you find the sum of these values, it comes out to be 23 and hence 23 is your answer. Simple, right? Let's take the, see the second example. So this is my initial matrix. The first operation is change the 0th row, make it 4. I made it 4. Change the 0th. Yeah, this one. Change the first row, make it 2. I've done it. Then change the 0th column, make it 1. I made it. Okay. And then the next operation is change the second row, make it 3. Yes. Then change the second column, make it 1. Okay. So you do it. This is the final configuration. All you need to do is find the sum of elements that is 17. Right. So that's the problem statement. Easy one. Right. Uh, obviously, you cannot apply, apply brute force here <laughs> that you can see, you see through the constraints as well. So n is equal to 10 raised to the power 4, right? Now, you cannot do a brute force here that, okay, give me a particular row, I'll traverse the whole row and I'll change the values. No, you cannot do it. First thing is, if you try to generate n cross n matrix, that will be 10 raised to the power 8. Okay, that is itself uh, time taking, right? And, and uh, memory heavy, right? You will not be doing this. Okay, the number of queries that you can have is 5 into 10 raised to the power 4. So if you do a brute force, what will happen? For every query, you will be traversing, in worst case, suppose a complete row. So a complete row can be this, right? This is surely going to give you TLE, right? So ultimately, you cannot do this, right? right? That's it. Now, let's see. Let's see how we can approach this problem, right? So I, I told you that one line is very important. Which line? This line. Overwriting any previous values, okay? It means that suppose at ith step in the ith query, I am changing row number two. Okay. And again, at some jth step, obviously j is greater than i. If I am again changing the second row, that means whatever was the operation applied here, that is discarded. This is the operation that will be applied, right? Because this is a this is an operation done at a later stage, right? That means instead of applying the operations from left to right can i apply the operations from right to left because in that case i will know that yes this is the latest operation so suppose if i do an operation at in, uh, at row number two and by moving in this direction i know that if i get another operation in row number two i'll not perform it because i've already performed an operation at row number two now obviously you can keep a track of which which rows have you uh, applied operations on you can take a set or any data structure but that's the trick here right so first thing is performing operations like this okay now what's the second trick second trick is suppose this is my matrix okay i i apply an operation at this column this row this row what is happening here the values are changing right 
the values are changing this has changed this has changed however this has not changed because you applied an operation at this column okay how to know how to know that actually what are the final values right so don't try to generate the matrix do it like this if this is your matrix okay if this is your matrix so what happens just see initially i have n rows and n columns right n rows and n columns so if, if in this case suppose the first operation that i'm performing is let's let's dry run this example only and i'll tell you okay three cross three matrix okay this operation is type one that means choose a column index number two one 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 right so you are placing one 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 here so right now how many rows do i have i have three rows okay all the rows are uh, unvisited till now right i have three rows that means this column will have three cells okay so my the contribution of this column in my answer will be three into the value that i am putting that is one plus this operation is done this is gone okay this is gone now there is also one thing to note here that thing to note here is now i am going in in left direction that means the operations which have been performed before is before this right so if i perform an operation on any row right so for every row one cell has decreased you do not have to perform an operation on these cells now right so what i'll do initially i had n rows and n columns to perform operation now i have n rows sorry yeah i have n rows but only how many columns i have c minus one columns now right this column you cannot apply any operation you just have two columns getting it so whenever you are doing an operation on a row like for example if i am doing an operation on this row i just check how many columns i am left out with okay i can just take a variable to note it down whenever i am doing an operation on a column right for example if i am doing an operation on a column so suppose before this operation i have updated this row and this row how many cells am i left with in this column just this one so you can just take a variable that how many rows are updated and how many columns are updated simple stuff okay so let's uh, dry run this one three into one is something that i do here okay let me erase it otherwise this will not become clear okay but this will be the approach right this is a three cross three matrix the first operation is second initially you have rows columns both are n okay you do this operation you place one 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 here right your contribution is three into one okay now the number of columns will decrease it will become n minus one now the second operation is on this particular row which row this row place values three okay place values three so you are just able to place value three and three here you can't place a three here because i've already placed a one here right or rather at a later stage you a query will be placing one here right because we are moving from right to left so what i'll do the contribution will be three into how many cells are there these many cells are there n minus one that is two okay and now how many rows are now what are the new number of rows n minus one now you cannot perform an operation on this row also okay n minus one rows n minus one columns okay plus the next operation is on a particular column this one place values one okay so i am performing an operation on a column how many rows do i have right when you perform an operation on a column you need to count the number of rows one row two row right n minus one rows so this is two rows and what's the value that is one plus this is also gone now the number of columns you have you have updated it number of columns you got n minus two just left out with this column the next operation is pick up a row which row this row and uh, place values two here right so this is gone this is gone you're left out with only this one so that is one and two what's the value two getting it so now <laughs> one row is also decreased so how many rows you are left out with n minus two just one just one right one row one column this guy is remaining so zero zero you place a four here you place a four here just add him so three maybe let's see what's the value so plus two plus two plus four so six 8 10 14 15 16 17 17 is your answer 17 is your answer right so that's the approach that i'll use here the code is very small initialize your answer with zero the number of queries you have row count column count okay visited rows visited columns 
start reversing your queries from the right hand side which type of query is it which index you are performing the update at okay what's the value you are placing okay if type equals to zero that means i am updating a row if visited rows contains index if visited row is containing index uh, that means if this row has been visited skip it otherwise if this is not visited what you do answer equals to answer plus one what is the value and how many columns you are left out with okay then decrement the row count and add the current index in the visited rows okay else if if i am updating a column just see that column is not visited answer equals to answer plus one the value and the number of rows i have right because when you are updating a column you'll see in how many rows can you update it right and then column minus minus column count minus minus add the current index in the columns okay just keep on doing this uh, just i'll i'll reiterate if this is not clear just one more time because this, this may be confusing if you are updating a column okay you see how many rows are there if you are updating a row you see how many columns are there simple okay and the tricky case which i was talking about here is which may be giving you wrong answer is this part that there could be a case that at the ith step you have updated second row and at the gh step also you have updated the second row so you need to keep a track of that whether or not i have updated this particular row and column so that is i have taken a couple of sets separately to keep a track of which rows are visited and which row which columns are visited rather which rows are updated and which columns are updated right so yeah that's it for this problem um i, I hope you learned something new from this video this was a very good problem according to me um uh, i feel you learn a number of things from this right so yeah do support this video uh, by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel um also yeah uh, I'll, I'll i'll see you then i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye